we are extremely honored and privileged to have the honorable governor of kerala sri arif mohammed khan here with us and therefore with that most respect i request the honorable governor of kerala sri arif mohammed khan to deliver the validatory speech माननीय श्री जयनंद कुमार जी राष्ट्रीय संयोजक प्रज्ञा प्रवाह श्री ए के अनुराग जी डायरेक्टर मैक कॉम डॉक्टर एन आर मधु श्री हरि कृष्ण हरिदास जी ऑल दो दॉपिक the subject of the conclave is bringing bridging south but manni nand nand kumar ji has given me the responsibility the last sentence how can we reach to the world outside india i will request you to to please think about it the human beings cannot live in isolation they need a society to live in a society you need some basis of unity for that society and that is how civilizations and cultures world over have come into existence don't think that i am sitting in judgment about anybody everybody has nor nor is my intention to show any civilization in poor light but in order to have full understanding sometimes we need comparative studies look at the civilizations world over societies the semblance of unity which they achieved what was the basis and i am not talking of last 100 150 years civilizations are very old every civilization in the world culture was defined we all have the same color skin which means we belong to the same race therefore we we should become one society if that is the basis of unity then those whose skin color is different who are they they are the others less than us or we speak the same language therefore the language should become the basis of unity what about those who do not speak this language they speak other languages they are the others we believe i mean god is the same but we believe and know the god by this name and we give expression to our devotion or belief or faith in this particular manner that should create a brotherly feeling and bring us together what about those who 
who I who describe the God by some other name or who give expression to their devotion in the same God but with a different name who are they they are others this story of the other is very old and out of all the civilizations particularly ancient civilizations please don't think i'm 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 trying to indulge in self praise this is only a uh, an an attempt to understand because if we understand this thing then it will not only be our desire to go to the whole world it becomes our duty obligation that we go that these indian values become known throughout the world indian civilization and culture is the only civilization which was not defined either by race by language by one's faith or how you give expression to that that faith it is not 100 150 years when the whole whole world is started changing we said thousands of years ago bharateshu istriya purusho nana varna prakritite nana dev archane yukta nana karmani kurvate the women and men of india racially they belong to different stocks they in fact even this shlok is comparatively new in the vedic literature itself जन्म विभर्ति बहुदा विवाचसम नाना धर्माना पृथ्वी यथो कसम वी रिकॉग्नाइज डिफरेंस और डाइवर्सिटी एज लॉ ऑफ नेचर एंड देयर फोर एनी काइंड ऑफ डाइवर्सिटी हैज नेवर नेवर बिकम अ सोर्स ऑफ डिस्टर्बेंस फॉर अस rather we have treated that as a source to strengthen our culture our civilization look at the world today what is happening sometimes when you when you sit alone after reading the newspapers or watching the tv sometimes you feel as if the whole world is going to come to an end 1948 almost every country of the world they had they had put their signatures on universal declaration of human rights and what is the foundation of the human rights dignity of mankind from dignity of mankind all other rights flow whether it is equality it is justice it is every other right flows from the from the dig, concept of dignity of mankind after signing that we recognize acknowledge accept that every human being is entitled to dignity by birth every day we read in the newspapers we shall these people deserve to be wiped out these people deserve to be finished we will we don't want to see them alive why why is it so when you have already every country has signed the declaration why it is so because the fact remains that laws can be changed or new laws can be made in a day 
or in a month or in a year. But it is a Herculean task to change your habits, change your attitudes. That concept of the other is still lingers. On the other hand, Indian civilized, what, what is the defining parameter of Indian civilization? Our thought leaders, whom we call rishis, this we must keep in our mind, that whether it is the power wielders, those who were in seats of power, or military leaders, they have never been ideals of Indian society. The ideals of Indian society, who are the ideals of Indian society? As Swami Vivekananda has said, India has only two national ideals, renunciation and service. Intensify her in these two channels, the rest will take care of itself. So who are our heroes? Our heroes are, in fact, I should, I should say one thing more. Because these two ideals, for them, there is a prerequisite. And that has been expressed beautifully by Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore. He says, I love India. Not because I cultivate the idolatry of geography. Not because I have had the good fortune to be born on her soil. But I love India because she has, through tumultuous ages, successfully saved the living words which issued from the illuminated consciousness of her children. This is a knowledge civilization. Word, for us, the important thing is word. So how our culture and civilization was defined? It was not defined by the variable and alienable characteristics like race, language, religious faith, no. It was defined by Atma, soul. The old democracies in the world, much older than us, they start, when they started their democracies, they did not give voting rights to women. When we started after freedom, our literacy percentage was only 17%. But we started with universal franchise. Is it because as human beings we are better than them? No. Basically, human beings are all alike then what is the difference? The difference is that of cultural values. Our culture, our values did not permit our leaders to make distinct... I am not saying that we are free from uh, defects. We have done many things wrong. But as far as our cultural legacy, the theory is concerned, in practice, we may have gone astray. But as far as the theory is concerned, it's so pure. Just now, uh, Nand Kumarji was kind enough. He spoke so many gracious words about, about me. My interest in Sanatan is not just academic. Sanatan is my heritage. <laughs> I am proud of this heritage. Why I am proud of this heritage? Because this is the only culture which has a universal vision. Which there is no room for the other in this system. I was, as I was saying, we started, we did not say that women won't. Why they said women will not have the right to vote? Because for many, many long years, they believed that women and black people do not have atma. And anybody who does not have atma, we have a right to exploit them. What was our approach, the approach of our thought leaders? 
our thought leaders told us that not only, I mean, next Janam, you can be a woman or man or even an animal, bird or even a rock. So how this culture was defined? Atma. When a culture is defined, I mean, the invariable and inalienable characteristic. So our thought leaders told us not only that we cannot make a distinction between man and woman, but they also told us that we do not have any right to exploit even animals, birds, the environment crisis which we are facing today, what is the, what is the root cause? The root cause is that we are, we are instead of utilizing it positively for the benefit of mankind, we are exploiting these resources and that has created a crisis before the humanity. So, so in, this is how what, how beautifully and powerfully this declaration has been made. Yada bhuta pirthak bhava mekas thamanu pashyati tat eva cha vistaram brahma sampadiyate tada. All these people who are sitting in this hall and outside, which is only an extension. They all have emanated, they all are manifestation of one alone. If we really understand this message of Indian, of, of our great sages and our great books, that I am your extension and you are my extension. I was reading only uh, yesterday. Swami Vivekanand, he says that as long as you will have the feeling that you are, even in the least measure you are, lesser than God, you will, con you will be haunted by fear. The moment you realize what the message which Adi Shankar, the great son of Kerala, he also did, remember it, he also did not claim any originality. He merely made this whole at that time, India was politically fragmented into pieces. And this young man from Kalari in Arnakulam starts his journey, go, goes all over the subcontinent and establishes four months. But again, and many a time I have heard people saying that he, by establishing the muds, he created Indian unity. You know, buildings do not create unity. Buildings are monuments of power, physical power. It is the monuments of mind which bring change and revolution. What was the contribution of Adi Shankar, Shankar? He took four Mahavakyas from four Vedas and to each mat he gave one Mahavakya. Pragyanam Brahma. The supreme wisdom is the supreme truth. You want to say God? Say God. I am Atma Brahma. This soul is supreme truth. 
अहम ब्रह्मास्मी आ एम दी सुप्रीम ट्रुथ तत्व अमसी एंड यू आर दैट सुप्रीम ट्रुथ can there be a better and more effective way to to instill in our minds the message of human dignity and equality than this swami vivekananda says my my mission can be explained in very simple words i want to teach and to mankind sir he did not say indians he said what you just now said because he realized the need to take this message beyond our borders so he said i want to teach and to mankind their their divinity and its manifestation in all movements of life if you start if you have imbibed this message internalize this message is it possible if i do that is it possible will it remain possible for me to to put my foot on the foot of the other person not possible many a time we say with great pride that india even during the time its hey days when india was seen by the world as a as knowledge superpower we never had aggressive designs sir possibly we might have had aggressive designs but our culture the teachings of our rishis did not allow us to violate the sanctity of the other see yourself in the other person see brahma in the other person we are all spiritually linked i am i have said all these things only to say that despite the fact that we all are signatory to the un declaration of human charter of human rights yet we are violating it every day because that age old concept of the other is still lingering in the minds india how so ever powerful it become and you know when we prime minister is talking about viksit bharat viksit bharat is revival of the glorious india this is not something new because naturally uh, if we had not heard why history would have been so cruel to us but now as swami vivekananda had said he had said that i do not i am not a star gazer i do not try to see into future i do not care to see but one vision is absolute as clear as life before my eyes and that is that mother india that is india that is mother bharat is awakened once more sitting on her throne sitting on her throne rejuvenated more glorious than ever why because he knew that indian civilization is essentially a knowledge civilization and now the world in which we live even when we feel that it has become so dangerous it is only because of the knowledge the 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 new areas which have been explored through science and technology just one country and there are so many countries but one country's nuclear arsenal is enough to destroy the whole mankind one feels worried 
in this scenario. So what is the way out? The way out is that we should start walking the talk. We should become living embodiment of the values of the cultural heritage which we have inherited. Because merely my speech will not, will not uh, impact people. It is mostly the best method, as Mahatma Gandhi has said, my life is my example. If our lives become example of that, what our great rishis had envisioned, then I assure you, the world is old habits die hard, but the world is struggling. It is hungry, it is thirsty for something where everybody can be treated with equality and with dignity. And that is possible through Indian civilizational ideals and values. Uh, I, th I think I should say a few sentences about this bridging south also. Actually, the, um, if you had Nand Kumarji consulted me, I would have suggested to you to uh, change it to bridging the north. <laughs> south is not problem. And fortunately now, even north is not problem. Earlier we had this attitude that if we are Hindi speaking, then we know everything about India. Our attitude was problematic. South attitude was never problematic. South, though I see, I'm not saying it here. I've said it so many times. Now I have completed four years in Kerala, little more than four years. And I can say, I'm, I do not know how many Keralites are sitting there. So I'm not saying it to make you feel happy. But I tell people in UP and Delhi and other parts of North India, if you want to, to see unadulterated Sanatan mindset come to Kerala, <laughs> unadulterated, nobody suspects anybody. And as Dr. Radha Krishnan had said, if you want to live civilized existence, then it is essential to cultivate the quality of compassion. And the next sentence he said, our former president, to a woman, compassion comes naturally. This one incident, if I, uh, the, the, the episodes of which I know, I have read about, there are too many most of the time will be consumed in that. People of the South, we should never, never, never commit this mistake of having any erroneous impression that they are less patriotic than people in North India. No, that is not true. They are deeply patriotic people. And I, I, I ask you one question, particularly those who are from Northern India. We have so many public performances about Lord Krishna. These stories revolving around his life. Have you ever seen anybody on the stage who is either reciting or they are, they are staging a play or something that the actors start uh, weeping and crying? No. We, we, here in Northern India, there are so many performances. We watch them. We like them, we love them. But in Kerala, even in Tamil Nadu, any performance, even recitation of a poem, even in school, uh, schools where the children recite the poem on, on, on Lord Krishna, 
by the time they come to the end of the poem, they, they, their eyes are full of tears. That is the Bhakti Bhav in, in, in South. And what, what great tribute has been paid. Uh, uh, you know, South essentially, uh, it is, in our tradition it is, it is recognized that South is essentially uh, uh, this, the deity of the South is uh, Lord Shiva. Now what a tribute has been paid by a Shaivite, Shaiv, to Lord Krishna. He says, Shaiva hamna khalu tatra vicharaniyam panchakchari japapara nitram tathapi मैं बड़ा पक्का शिवजी का भक्त हूँ। I am an ardent devotee of Lord Shiva, and my time passes in in reciting the Panchakshari Om Namo Shivaya. चेतो मदिया मतसि कुसुमा वभासम इस मेरा ननम समारति गोपावधु किशोरम all the time I am chanting the name of Lord Shiva, but what, I do not know what to do with my heart, which always runs away to the darling of the gopis. I am a Shaivite, but my heart always runs away to the, to the darling of the gopis. What a, what a wonderful, sublime and subtle tribute. Likewise, in fact, we know who has composed these four lines. But the next four lines I am going to recite. We even do not know the name of the person. Reportedly, a 15, 16 year old girl from Kerala, she goes to Tirupati. She stands before the deity. And then there itself, she composes these lines. The lines have been saved. They are documented. But the name of the composer is not known to anybody. And she says there, she stands before the deity. And she says, Ratna Karastav Girham Jaya Chalakshmi. Your abode is the ocean which is full of pulse, wealth. And prosperity is your wife, Jaya Chalakshmi. Kim Deyam Asti Bhavte Parshottamai. What can I offer you? As a token of my devotion. Oh Supreme Being, tell me what can I offer you? I have nothing to offer you. You, though you are already, uh, you are wedded to prosperity. You live in a place which is full of pulse. Abhir Gopalalna Hirta Manasaya Dattam Manome Toritam Girhan. But I know one fact. And the fact is that your heart has been stolen by the gopikas of Vrindavan. Therefore, the only thing which I can offer you is my heart. What a beauty, I mean, what, 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 look at the sentiments, the feelings. And keep it in mind that Lord Rama, he goes up to south. Lord Krishna never crossed Vindhyachal. And the devotion, quality of devotion, intensity of devotion is worth seeing. So, South, actually, we, what we basically, we are in need of. The whole problem is ignorance. There has been a time in our history. This country has always been, people of this country have always been devotees of Masaraswati. But the process of education is not completed by mere acquisition of knowledge. Process of education is come. What is tapa? Tapa, uh, this is an Upanishadic dialogue. What is tapa? Tapa is swadhyay, acquisition of knowledge, plus pirvachan, share that knowledge with others. 
there was a time in our history when we stopped sharing knowledge with others. Rather, we closed the doors. Swami, Swami Rangnath Nandaji, who was a direct disciple of Swami Vivekananda, and he headed Ramakrishna Mission for many years. He has dealt with this question in detail in his book. He says that we continue to pay lip service to Mother Saraswati. And then he quote, but he says, but, but we were not really loyal to the, those ideals. And he quotes from Srimad Bhagavat, Saraswati Gyan Kalv Yatha Sati, a scholar who imprisons knowledge within herself or himself, is not a devotee of Ma Saraswati, he is a villain of Saraswati. We paid the price for that. After all, we believe in the theory of karma. But now, we should, uh, now that, that we are, we have struggled against that. And new awareness has come, as Swami Vivekananda has said. And education is accessible to everybody. So, in this, when, uh, we have more, more room for exchange of ideas, for meeting each other, knowing each other, then even this impression that there is some difference uh, between South and, and North, even that will, uh, that I think will disappear into thin air. You have referred to the incident yesterday. Uh, Tar, the first thing which came to my mind, honestly, uh, you know, in l last two days' time, on 7th, a prominent leader, not prominent leader, head of the government, he announces that governor's action, what is the action? Supreme Court has said, Honorable Supreme Court in its judgment, has said that appointment of the Vice Chancellor is the sole responsibility of the Chancellor and government of the state has no business to interfere in it. Chancellor also, also makes, there is a provision, Chancellor makes nominations to the bodies of the university, particularly Senate. So some nominations were made. So he is saying, by nominating certain persons who can be identified as belonging to certain organizations, the governor is provoking these students. And two days la later, can you imagine? You go to a place, somebody tries to create disturbance, it is understandable. But when you come back at the same spot, same people are creating disturbance again. Can this happen anywhere? Police will remove once something has happened. For miles, police will not allow them to come. But they were present at the same spot. This happened day before yesterday. Yesterday, I thought it's okay. Although legally they are not allowed to do it. The law is absolutely clear. That in the case of Audible President of India and any governor of any state, you cannot try to induce fear. You cannot try to overawe him by show of force. But it's okay, we are a democracy. So if they want to show black flags, I don't mind it. What they did, in the presence of the police, they came before the car, car had to be stopped and from every side the black flags which they were carrying the the sticks of the flags with that they were hitting the hitting the car at one stage when we were before the kerala university i thought that the glass pane has broken and if it breaks naturally people sitting inside will be injured but as the normally 
normal practices in police wants to, uh, those who are with you in the security, they want to avoid uh, any scene like that. And they, they tried and took the car with little more speed. I said, no, this cannot go. If there is another place where they are going to, the, to do this, and they are going to, why, why waste your energy in hitting the car? I will get down and I will ask them to hit me. And I tell you, Swami Vivekananda had said long time back. He said, face the brute, face the terrible. Don't run away from them. And he said, that like monkeys, they fall back if you cease to flee from them. And Shrivat Bhagavad Gita says, Vyasman nod vijate loko, lokan nod vijate chaya, harsha marsh bhayo degare, degera mukto, ya sa cha me priya. One who does not try to frighten anybody, scare anybody, and one who does not feel scared of anybody and is free from this feeling of joy and sorrow and fear, then Lord says that such a devotee is dear to me. There are so many things in our, uh, in our heritage to inspire us and face this kind of rowdy elements. There is nothing special which I have done. I have only possibly, my attitudes have been shaped by this, not that I fully know about it. I am only a student, you are a scholar. <laughs> yes, you are a scholar. But uh, as a student, definitely all these things which I am very fond of reading and reading it again and again and again, same book, maybe they have helped me and they have helped in shaping my attitudes. Thank you very much. Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Valde Nanni Jai Hind.